Hello friends, press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon for more such easy videos. Hello friends, I am back with a new video. Friends, in this video I will be talking about Kingdom Protista. This is the fourth video of Living World. And when we talk about Kingdom Protista, logically it includes all the unicellular eukaryotes. When we use the word eukaryote, it means that they have a well developed and well defined nucleus. Let's understand the general characteristics of Kingdom Protista. First of all, we need to talk about cells. So we say all are eukaryotes. Eu means true, karyo means nucleus. So these are those animals which includes well developed nucleus. The body of Protista, they all are unicellular, made up of single celled. Lifestyle of Protista, they are producers. They can make their own food. They are consumers, they are dependent on others. At the same time, they are decomposers. It means they derive nutrition from the dead animals. What will be the mode of nutrition? Since they are producer, it can be autotrophic. They are consumers, so they are heterotrophic. But in heterotrophic, we have two modes of nutrition. One will be parasitic and second is saprophytic. When I say parasitic, it means they will harm the host to derive the nutrition. And saprophytic means they feed on dead and decaying matter. The cell wall, since it is a eukaryotic cell, we say cell wall is made up of cellulose only if it is a plant-like protist means the protista which is acting or behaving like a plant otherwise an animal like protist the cell wall will be absent nucleus of protista we say it is present along with the all cell organelles like mitochondria golgi body and chloroplast when you talk about reproduction of protista it's both sexual as well as asexual sexual reproduction takes place by fusion of gametes and asexual reproduction takes place by spore formation or binary fission Let's understand protista with respect to the three different types because protista only gave rise to three different kingdoms like plantae, animalia and fungi. So some of the protistas they behave like plant. So they are called as plant like protist. Some behave like animals. They are called as animal like protist. And some behave like fungus. They are called as fungus like protist. So in plant like protist, since they are plant, they have to be autotrophic. They prepare their own food. Plants have cell walls, so they have cellulosic cell wall and the stored food material will be always starch as they do photosynthesis. Autotrophs and they are producers. When you talk about plant like protists, it includes different groups like it includes chrysophytes, dinoflagellates, diatoms, desmids which are also known as golden algae. When we talk about animal like protists, we say they are heterotrophs, they derive nutrition from others so they are consumers. They do not have cell wall because animals don't have cell wall. We do store food that is in the form of glycogen and they always ingest food. In animal like protists, the examples that we can have is amoeba and paramecium. When I say fungi like protists, definitely they are saprophytic. So we say they are saprotrophs. They derive the nutrition from dead and decaying animals. They lack cell wall. There is no reserve food in them and they are extremely resistant to unfavorable conditions. When you talk about fungi, example is slime mold. So this protista was having plant-like protist, which gave rise to kingdom plantae, animal-like protist, which gave rise to kingdom animalia, and fungi-like protist, which gave rise to kingdom fungi. Let's understand these plant-like protist examples in much detail as it is important for your NEET exam. When you talk about diatoms, what are the functions of diatoms? They are used for chromatography. What is chromatography? It is the method of separating the compounds based on their molecular weight. What is filtration? It is used to filter certain liquid stuff. Diatoms are also used for polishing. When you talk about euglenoids, we need to understand euglena didn't got place in the Whittaker's Five Kingdom classification. Why? Because euglenoids or the euglena, it showed both autotrophic and heterotrophic mode of nutrition. It simply means that this euglena was behaving like a plant in the sunlight at the same time it was behaving like an animal when there is light absent. So instead of cell wall they have a protein rich layer called as pellicle. In plant cell the cell wall is made up of cellulose but euglenides they have protein rich layer called as pellicles. They have two flagellas for locomotion one is large and one is small. These euglenas they have pigments for photosynthesis like chlorophyll A. At the same time, when light is not available, they do heterotrophic mode of nutrition. So this is one of the different group of euglenoid. Example, euglena. 
when we talk about the dinoflagellates they are different types first of all some of them they are marine and photosynthetic dinoflagellates they are yellow green brown blue and even red in color it has two flagella available red dinoflagellate undergoes rapid multiplication sometime and they makes the sea appear red we say it's a red sea so logically the sea appears red the sea is not red actually it is a dinoflagellate which is undergoing rapid multiplication to be very much specific it is red dinoflagellate which is undergoing rapid multiplication and makes the sea appear red example is goniolox when we talk about dinoflagellate under danger or threat they release some toxin in the water so as to protect themselves from the enemies even they can kill fishes also when we talk about the next one we have different types of protozoan like we have amoeboid protozoan we have flagellated protozoan ciliated protozoan and sporozoans when i say amoeboid we all know the word amoeba amoeba means amoeba shaped so they are amoeba shaped they have pseudopodia for locomotion habitat wise they are marine in nature shell or silica and if it is a parasitic it is entamoeba so this amoeboid protozoan exists in three form one is pure amoeba that moves with the help of pseudopodia second one is a parasitic entamoeba histolytica is one of the amoeboid protozoan that causes amoebiasis it's a type of loose motion and every year 70000 people die because of amoebiasis when i talk about flagellated protozoan these are free living or parasitic in nature they have flagella they cause a sleeping sickness cause example trypanosoma these are flagellated protozoans when i say ciliated protozoan these are aquatic they have cilia and the cavity called as gullet example is paramecium we all have seen sleeper shed paramecium which has cilia and it is a ciliated protozoan when you talk about sporozoans they are parasitic in nature example plasmodium one of the most dangerous protozoan which causes malaria so these are the different types of protozoans that we are supposed to take care of it is amoeboid protozoan flagellated protozoan ciliated protozoan and sporozoan